I'm gonna transform this entire mushroom island into a full medieval kingdom with over 100 houses, a castle, a massive dragon, boats, and a ton of other crazy secrets. This video contains over 300 hours of work and is by far my most ambitious project ever. Make sure to stick around to the end and I promise you won't regret it. So about eight months ago, when I was exploring, I happened across this mushroom island. I thought it'd be pretty cool to make a base here, but the thing is to build anything here, these mushrooms first need to go. Okay, now that the mushrooms are gone, I'd like to begin with terraforming the shape of this island. Wait, oh my gosh, I got a sick idea. You see that pool there? Doesn't it kind of look like an eye of a skull? Oh, I could put another eye there and maybe a mouth below. Yeah, I'm gonna quickly try to shape this out because it would be so cool to make this island into a skull. To get the correct shape, I did use a few photos to trace it, but then I had to keep flying up and down to make sure everything was correct. Well, here we are. It's looking pretty fancy, except I lied. It looks horrible. We need to get rid of all of this mycelium. I think I just have a natural hatred towards all mushrooms or something. So there are pretty much two ways to do this. The first is to cover it all in water. That will convert the mycelium into dirt, where we could then place grass and it would spread. However, that method is pretty slow. So then we could try the second approach of covering all of the blocks in netherrack. Afterwards, we could remove the netherrack and should only have dirt. Oh. Oh man, there are over 100,000 blocks to cover. Here is the first block. All right, it has been 15 hours and I have turned the entire place into a grassy oasis. Next up, it's time to terraform this entire island. I'm gonna first fill in all of these open spots and then I'm gonna make a platform for the future castle. It looks like the inner parts also need to be terraformed. I first cleared all of the water away and then mined them down. From there, I replaced the floors and the walls to make them look much more rough and random. After I finished that, I spent several hours mining all of this flat land around the island down so it would look more natural. Now that we've finished that, I kind of want to connect these floating parts to the ground. I think we could use cobblestone, andesite, and stone to do this. This required building an additional cobblestone farm, as well as a super smelter to cook all of it into normal stone. And now I gotta mine a whole bunch of andesite. Perfect, we got all of our materials and now it's time to terraform. Because I was underwater for such a long time, I also needed a conduit. But to make the conduit, I needed a drown farm so that I could get the nautilus shells to make the conduit. Well, our island is fully terraformed and it only took 150 hours and countless YouTube streams. I do however think this is a good time to begin planning the city. I'd first like to put a castle up there somewhere and maybe leading up to it we can have a bridge. Just kidding, I lied. Actually, Actually two bridges. Next, I think we should begin working on the castle. I actually made a full separate video on building this castle, so I highly recommend checking that out first. But basically, I had to shape the castle, and then using over 80,000 blocks, I built up walls, a roof, towers, courtyards, houses, and this thing. Let's not talk about that. All of this required building an additional dripstone farm, netherwort farm, a villager breeder, villager trading hall, an iron farm, a dragon egg duper, sand duper, and a concrete converter. Yup, all in all, I spent about 200 hours making this entire island into what it is. But now this is where the video is going to get even more insane. Because today I'm gonna subscribe, I mean collect over 400,000 blocks to prepare for the surrounding city. I've made a full list of all the items I will need for this project. But the thing is, some of these are really difficult to get large quantities of. So the plan for today is to build all those farms for these items. First of all, we're gonna need a bunch of wood, but to store the wood, we're gonna need shulker boxes. My old shulker farm kinda broke. So the first farm we're going to be building is a shulker farm. It looks like there's a big list of items required. First up, scaffolding, smooth stone slabs, soul sand, buttons, trapdoors, glass, and... All right, that should be everything. Now to build this farm, I was thinking that in the industrial district with all the other farms would be best. Well then, it's time to begin. I'm putting a bunch of snowmen in here. I guess these attack the shulker and make it work. I also needed to make this super easy snow farm for all of the golems. 
Okay now, we need to spawn an Endermite in here. And get into the minecart. And that should be the last block of the farm. Now we actually need to get a shulker into the farm. And if I recall, yes, a while back, I actually managed to get a few shulkers into the overworld at spawn. So let's quickly make a path to the place. If I could please stop getting hit, minecart. Yes, there he goes. Move it, buddy. Drop in, please. And it should be working. Yes, we are getting shells. However, once these shulkers spawn on these spots, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a lot faster. I think if I quickly build a chunk loader above the farm. Now while we work on our other projects, the farm will AFK and should get these shulkers. Although these shulkers are just half of the problem. To make a shulker box, you need two shells and a chest. To make a chest, that's eight wooden planks. Say I wanted to make several thousand shulker boxes, I would need a ton of wood. So I think our next farm will be a wood farm. I had a really cool idea for a wood farm area. Basically, there are nine different types of wood in game. Now I've researched high and I've researched low, and I've found really good farms for each of these woods. Now something that needs to be taken into account is that each of these farms require a ton of bone meal to fuel them. So what if we built all nine farms in one area and then make a crazy bone meal farm on top of that? After that, we could create tubes that link all of them to the bone meal farms. I actually think this is a really cool idea, but first I need to find where I'm going to build these farms. Possibly out here on the ocean? Because I do have a bunch of other farms out here, it might be a good spot. The first wood farm we're going to be building is going to be a mangrove farm. This new wood came with everyone's favorite update 1.19. The mangrove color is really nice, and I'm sure that on the castle island I'll use a lot of it. So let's follow the tutorial and build this thing. This one requires some stone bricks, and for some reason a bunch of stripped oak logs. This is going to be satisfying. Perfect. Now a ton of redstone stuff. Let's also grab some chests for storage. And I think that should be everything. I'm going to quickly go ahead and build the farm. Nice. That was actually really easy to follow. To test it, we need some propagules and then to place them here while it's running. Holy cow, that's all of the wood from like 30 seconds of running it. Although to let that farm AFK, I do need to make a propagule farm, but I'm gonna make that one later. Next up, we have another relatively simple farm, the Nether Trees farm. The cool thing about this is that it doesn't actually need a player to run. That essentially means it can be chunk loaded and will be producing infinite wood. There we are. To run this, we're gonna need a ton of bone meal, which I do not have. So before we test that one, I wanna build up the bone meal farm. Jeez, that's a lot of items. For some reason, this farm requires like 400 target blocks, each of which require a hay bale. Do we have any hay? Not much. Well, I have seen people go to villages and get the hay bales. Why are there so many iron golems? And that should be all that we need. I suppose also a ton of redstone things. Some glass and concrete. And now that everything is in shulker boxes, we can go ahead and build it up. This farm design is by Il Mango. It's a simple bone meal farm, but I built the largest version that makes over 26,000 bone meal in an hour. And there we are. If everything is working as intended, I should only have to put a bit of bone meal in this first section and then flick the lever. I think we can quickly connect the output of this farm to the nether trees and test if it works or not. Okay, here comes the first bone meal. I'm gonna need to let it run for a little while because it's gotta be completely full before the tree farm can work. The extra bone meal is starting to get burnt. I think if we flick this lever. Okay, the TNT. Oh man, the trees are growing. Oh my gosh, look at how much wood is just floating there. Actually, it's perfect because I was wanting to build the storage for all of these farms down here, and I'm gonna need a bunch of chests and shulker boxes inside of it. Wait, I wonder if the shulker farm is still running. We'll check back in later. So first of all, to make the storage for the farms, I'm gonna need to collect even more items. Keep in mind that I'm leaving out the crafting of most items. For example, I needed several hundred observers. Those require cobblestone, quartz, and redstone. I had to first use my cobble farm. 
Then I went to my gold farm, where I then used all of the gold to trade at my piglin bartering farm for quartz. After that I collected redstone at the Cow King raid farm. Oh yeah, I also needed a lot of slime, a ton of honey, I used this farm, and pistons and more quartz, and wood and glass and trapdoors and hoppers and item frames. Let's just say that collecting the materials for this storage in the next farm was not easy and took me several hours. Oh, at least now I just need to build the farm. It shouldn't be too bad, I hope. What the heck? This is gonna take hours! and hours it did take. What I didn't realize is that if I messed up even one part, the entire farm would break. It's time to test it. Why is it not working? Oh my gosh, you're not gonna believe this. This one rail here needs to be at a slant. Okay, so yeah, the next farm is done. The really cool part about this farm is that you can do five different types of woods. You just press the button and you get whichever wood you want. I guess that means there's just one more farm to do. But before that, I do wanna build a super tiny propagule farm right here. Hopefully it should allow me to AFK the mangrove farm and not run out of propagules. Next up, I'd like to connect all of the farms to the bone meal farm and test if each one works. There we go. I also made some super quick glass tubes, and later we're gonna make it so you can change whichever farm they go to, but first, let's get the dark oak tree farm finished. I didn't even think it was possible to farm dark oak before. Okay, I seem to have run out of target blocks again. I seriously need a wheat farm. And there it is. Now, I actually wanna test this one. I think what we do is we get a bunch of saplings in our hand and then turn it on, get in the minecart. Now I need to point this direction, hold down my right click, yes. Dude, it's been like five minutes. What the heck? I am thoroughly mind blown. The best part is though, that was the last wood farm I had to make. I do however want to quickly set up some redstone to control the bone meal tubes. So if you notice, we have glass blocks here to stop the bone meal from falling. But when I remove the glass, it just falls through the water to the next tube. I was thinking if we set up some pistons here, I could control it with a lever. So... All right, and that completes the wood farms. If you know your redstone, you can probably recognize that I'm going to be using shulker box loaders here. Now that we have a ton of wood from the farms and the shells from the shulker farm, we gotta fill all of these chests up. Wait, has the shulker farm been working this whole time? There it is. Oh my, yes, it's been working. Okay then, with all the shells and all of this wood, I'm about to craft over 1,700 shulker boxes to put in here. Crafting them up like this is amazing because you can just do 64 at a time. What's crazy is that 1700 shulker boxes still isn't enough to fully stock this system. However, before we do any more, let's finish this half of the storage. Over here I'd like to sort some of the more rare items, like the mangrove roots, nether leaves, and apples. Why the apples? Um, um, I don't know. After over 30 hours of collecting items, building farms, and AFKing at them, these final shulker boxes should finish the wood district. Yes! Now to basically make sure everything's working, but to also get the items, I'm gonna spend a few hours AFKing at every farm. It's been a little while, but before I show you how much wood I collected, I'm legally inclined to say sorry to Team Trees. No, for real though, like first the mushroom trees, then I basically destroyed the mushroom's home, and now I'm literally using TNT to bomb thousands of mass-produced trees. Goodness gracious, when you put it that way, it, it was, absolutely worth it because i mean look at all of this wood this was from four hours of afk we are going to be more than prepared for this future city on the island except what i didn't tell you was that the shulker boxes and wood for the city was only half of the equation you see this house looks good but it's all wood this house also looks good but it's all stone i'm pretty sure you see where i'm going yep this stone and wood house looks extra splendid next up we need to collect like 200,000 stone blocks i was wondering how we might actually get these blocks. First of all, the basic stuff like stone, I can simply get from the stone farm. From there, I can craft stone bricks, as well as cook those in the super smelter to get cracked stone bricks. 
but then getting something like 31,000 deep slate will be much more challenging. I'm gonna quickly do some research and see if there's a way to farm the block. Okay, I did a bit of research and I think we're gonna build a tunnel bore. To build this machine, we first gotta find the perfect spot. And I think right here in the mesa works. And now I gotta mine all the way down to Y minus 55. Okay, and now I'd like to set up a beacon here, so... Now this is either gonna be awesome and save a ton of time, or awesome and kill me. And run, run, run. This is not quite large enough. I'm gonna repeat this until it's finished. That should be it. Now, I just need to build up the machine, and I already have all the materials, except for these weird dead coral fans. So it looks like I'm gonna take a little trip to the coral reef. Now that I have enough, let's build up the machine. And that should be the final part. I think to use the machine, we hit this note block. Please work, please work, please work. Okay, that was loud. Then I think we just come in here and make sure to pick up the items. Yup, that's from just one round. I guess we just need to repeat this until I have enough. I'm also gonna collect all of the tough and diamond ores that I find because they'll become more useful later. Now that all the deep slate and tough blocks can be checked off, I want to gather a bunch of dirt for paths and terraforming on the island. In total, I think about 12 shulkers will be enough. I've never really collected that much dirt before. In the past, whenever I had to collect dirt, I usually would get a bunch of shovels and just mine it, but I think there might be a faster and more explosively interesting way of obtaining it. TNT, TNT. That's what it is. Okay, here goes nothing. Roughly a stack and a half from just one TNT. So then if we get a bunch of these and just keep exploding them. There's our first inventory. This method is actually really good. And here we are, the last shulker completely full. Not too shabby. That only took like 30 minutes to get that much dirt. But uh, let's not talk about this area. Also, now that we got all the dirt, let's use some gravel to make coarse dirt. And four shulkers should definitely be enough. So I was looking at the new 1.19 blocks and I absolutely love the mud blocks. And I even more love the packed mud blocks. I'd like to collect about 10 shulkers of mud in total or just over 17,000 blocks. That's kind of a lot. There are mud farms that I've seen, but the issue with those is that they're slow and they use dirt, which doesn't really make sense because then I'd have to go out again and mine more dirt. So then I guess that leaves the option of finding a mangrove biome and mining the dirt. Yo, finally, that took like 30 minutes. I was considering doing the TNT method again, but honestly, in this case, I think just digging it up is faster. We definitely got enough mud, but I also want to get the packed mud block. Except this block is challenging to get because it requires wheat, like a lot of wheat. If I want to make four shulkers of packed mud, that requires 6,912 wheat. Just mining hay bales isn't going to cut it this time. I think instead, I'm going to make a quick wheat farm. Let's just get the materials really fast. Concrete, hoppers, dirt, pistons, and redstone dust. All right, now to build it, I went ahead and built it in the wood farm district because that allowed me to connect it to the bone meal farm. To use the machine, we just have to come down here and isn't that pretty cool? That's nearly two wheat every second. I'm gonna run this machine until there's enough wheat to make all the packed mud blocks. That should be all of it. But I was noticing that as I made some tools, my levels got pretty low. Time to AFK at the gold farm. All of that gold is from one hour of AFK. This is actually really convenient because if we take the gold to the pigment farm, 
And yup, they got some more blocks we need. Soul sand and blackstone, but also a ton of quartz and string. Oh yeah, I'm also now level 1015, so that's pretty cool. I was hoping that with all this quartz, I could craft diorite, which I could then turn into andesite. But to get 10 full shulkers of these blocks, that would require an insane amount of quartz. So I think it might just be better to go out and mine the blocks. And as for where we can mine the blocks, I think in the wall of this perimeter will work perfectly. Oh yeah, to make this perimeter where we're mining the blocks, I used a world eater. It could be argued that it's another farm, but I'll leave that to you to decide in the comments. It has been a while. I finished collecting exactly four shulkers of diorite, four of andesite, and two of granite. I got so many of each because I just love using these blocks in houses. You know, we've been collecting blocks for so long that I think I'll do the final couple ones in a montage. Lots of bricks and chisel bricks. There we go, sandstone and smooth sandstone. There we go. That's everything. I'm going to now move everything to the island and we can see the grand total. Jeez, about 250 shulkers completely full of items that we're going to be using to build this city. Doing the math on that, that's a grand total of 432,000 items. Well, I guess that's it for today's video. Nope. Now it's time to plan the entire city out. Don't worry, this will be quick. Anyways, I wanted the island to be split into 10 different districts. The castle district, the poor area, religious area, rich, the farms, industrial, the mine, the courtyard, the market, the ships, and the surrounding islands, as well as finally the dragon. One small thing, I think we should cover the entire island in beacons to make the work here easier. How about we quickly craft up 100 beacons? Oh, wait, I don't have enough nether stars. That's the 100 nether star. That's 100 beacons. And that's 72 beacons on an island. For real though, this project is probably going to take me over half a year to finish. If you're interested in seeing the progress, please remember to subscribe and turn notifications on so that whenever I post the next part, you don't miss out. Wait a minute, no way. Someone just told me that if I get a charged creeper to blow up my shulker boxes, they duplicate. Here goes nothing. <laughs>